poster to us, dear Lord Jesus. We just ask, dear Lord God, that you continue to give us the wisdom and the strength that we need. Let us open up our hearts and let us take in whatever you have for us this evening. We ask that you be with each and every one of us and our families. We thank you for in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, tonight we are going to finish up chapter chapter 12 of the of, of the book of Acts. Um, not sure um, how many of you remembered uh, what we what we covered uh, in this particular in this particular chapter, but uh, as we look to the scripture, uh, the last few weeks we saw uh, that, uh, that 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 Peter that Peter was actually in prison, and. Um, and and they they had already uh, they actually had Peter and uh, uh, James uh, the brother of uh, the brother of John they had him in in uh, in, in prison and uh, Peter was scheduled uh, I, I think you can say that Peter was on uh, in modern day term he was on death row and uh, some supernatural way. Um, God sent an angel uh, down to to rescue Peter, and the, the the story continues that why while Peter was in prison, the believers got together and they had a a prayer meeting. Uh, they had one of those types of prayer meetings where they're asking God to move, Lord God, move right now. The interesting thing about uh, uh, the, the story is that while they were asking God to move, God chose to move. <laughs> and so while they were in their prayer meeting, uh, again, I don't know if this has ever happened to any of you, while they were in their prayer meeting, praying for Peter's release, Brother Peter was knocking at the door, knock, 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 knock. And the story talks about the uh, woman uh, opening the door and seeing Peter, and um, uh, it it seems as if she shut the door in Peter's face and went running back into the prayer meeting and say, you know, Peter's at the door. And uh, and I think the folks in the prayer circle uh, told us she, you know. In loss of mind, maybe you took a when you left us, you took a drink, <laughs> and now you're coming back. <laughs> you lost your mind. Peter's not at the door. Peter's still in. Peter's in jail. No, Peter's at the door. Well, the story continues. Peter shows up and shows himself to uh, the believers that were praying for him, and uh, and he shared the testimony how he had a supernatural visitation. Uh, by an angel. And so uh, the story continues. Uh, you know, you had uh, King Herod was uh, very much involved in all of this. When they learned that uh, Peter had escaped, um, they, uh, and they had all of this protection. He was under, under some serious protection. They ordered that the men that were protecting, that supposedly were protecting and uh, ensuring that Peter would not escape, uh, they actually lost. They actually lost their lives, uh, and we know the, the the ultimate reason why they wanted to kill uh, Peter. They wanted to kill Peter for spreading the good news of, of Jesus Christ. You know, if we ever stop and and assess uh, the value of the Word of God, you know, the Bible tells us that the Word of God is like it's like pearls. Uh, it's uh, it's extremely valuable. It's like pearls. In fact, uh, we're 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 instructed in scriptures to not take pearls so valuable and just throw them away. The scripture talks about casting your pearls before the swine. So uh, so this thing we have called the gospel, it is so precious that uh when it uh when it goes forth it does supernatural things and so 
So they did not want Peter spreading these pearls around because as the word of God went forth, people began to get saved. People began to get healed, de de delivered. And so the more they allow him to, to share the word of God, people grabbed a hold to it and, and, and believe it. And so often in our day and time that we don't view the word of God like the uh, people during the Bible days and in the ancient days, uh, they, they treasured the word of God. In the book of Nehemiah, uh, it speaks of Ezra the scribe standing and reading the word of God and the people that were there, the scripture says that they, they, they stood up all day long just listening to the word of God. We know faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The word of God, the word of God, the word of God. So we have to be real careful. We have to be real careful about this word because it is so precious, people of God. It is, it, it is so precious. And so when it, when it comes out of our mouth, it has an assignment. The scripture says it will accomplish all that that God has set out for it to accomplish, that it will never return void, it will never return empty-handed. So that was that's what Peter was doing. And so Peter was God's man, and God still had uh, some work to do in Peter's life. So although Herod tried to do everything, although they tried to do everything to take Peter out, they could not take Peter out because God was not through with him yet. And, and, and many of us have had close calls in our lives where the enemy tried to take us out, but God was not through with us yet. You know, I was, I was five years old and I was shot, or I should say five years old and I got a hold to my father's gun and I shot myself. And I had a, I had a finger that was hanging off. And, uh, you know, blood was just all over the place. The ambulance came and took me and they got the, you know, got the finger back on and everything. But the, but the bottom line and, and, and that bullet that came through my hands, uh, it ricocheted in the room. And I know I'm five years old, but uh, parents tell me the story. It ricocheted in the room and went out the window. And I had my two younger uh, brothers that were there present with us. So, so the, 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 the neat thing about this story is that God had a plan and a purpose for me. So that bullet could not take me out. That bullet could not take me out. One day, if you're ever in my presence, I will show you uh, the, the hole. In fact, there's a big hole right here. And you can see where the bullet came out right here. And this whole hand, picture a five-year-old hand. So this whole hand here was all, all black from a, 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 a revolver that I, that I got a hold to and, and it went through my, through my hand. But again, all I wanted to say with that story is that God was not through with me yet. God had a plan. He had a purpose uh, for me and that bullet could not take me out. It may have injured me, but it could not take me out. And I'm sure uh, if we just open up, many of you can say the same thing. So, so there we have Peter uh, showing up before these believers and letting these believers know their prayer been answered and God was at work. And then Peter gives a message to them to tell the other apostles what great thing God has done, what, what supernatural thing God has done. Then the story kind of comes, uh, comes to a close here. And then we go all the way down, I believe, right at verse, verse 20. Uh, verse, verse 20 is, um, is where, we, where we pick up. And we, 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 we hear about Herod. The scripture says, Then Herod went from Judea to, to, Caesar, to Caesarea and uh, stayed there. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. After securing the support of Batas and a trusted personal servant of the king, 
they asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their for their food supply. Now, now there's a there's a few things we we want to note on uh, in verse twenty one. Look at this. It says, "On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public." address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not of a man. This is the voice of a God, not of a man. Now, something went wrong here. It, it, it is amazing what happens uh, when, 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 when individuals seek to take the place of God. Uh, one thing that we know about our God is that God does not share any of his glory. Uh, he is not interested in sharing any of his glory with any of us. It is his glory, okay, is not ours. When we, when we, we, when we glorify him, he actually is the one that lifts us up because he gives us the, the ability to do so many, so many great things. So as you see here, the king, how he he dressed himself up in, in, in preparation to convince people that you don't need nobody else but me. Forget about any other God that you've had any acquaintance with, as long as you got me, you're okay. Now, God obviously had a problem with that. That God had a problem with that because he decided to put himself in place of, of the almighty God. And any individual uh, that seeks to do that, uh, can can rest assured that their day of reckoning is coming. In fact, if you're around people and they behave like that, you want to get away from them. <laughs> so when lightning strikes you, <laughs> you're not an innocent bystander. But but no one no one should make any attempts to take the glory of of God. And we and we learned in the in the next in the next part of this here. We learn how God operated. They said, they shouted, this is the voice of God, not man. The scripture said immediately because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. He was eaten by worms and died. He had several things going against him. Number one, he was going after God's man. He was going after being able to stomp out, being able to kill the gospel message from, from, from going out. You know, the last thing anyone on this earth should want to do is interfere with the preaching and the teaching of the gospel. We know that part of Jesus' final exit strategy out of this world, Jesus gave a what, what is known as the Great Commission uh, statement or charge. And, and he charged us to do what? Can someone tell me? What did he charge us to do? Can someone tell me real quickly here? go out and spread the gospel. That's right. Go out and spread the gospel. So the, I don't care how modern this society get. I don't care how technology advanced. Nothing replaces, nothing can replace the preaching and the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing can, nothing can replace it. The word of God must Go for, you know, 
the only thing that can change me, only thing that can change you is the word of God. So, you know, if, if, if we don't have the, we don't have the word of God, you know, you know, you can talk about doing all types of things to fix our society, to fi fix the ghetto areas and the, the slum areas and everything. But if there is no gospel, there is no gospel, you'll never be, you'll never be able to fix it. You may be able to correct some things temporarily, but if the heart of man is not, is not changed, then you will not be successful at doing so. So it was Herod's vision and goal to stump out the gospel message. So he went after those apostles. He went after them. He wanted to kill them. And, you know, there's something about, well, you know, if, if you're ever trying to uh, get rid of a snake, do you chop his tail off? Uh, brother, brother, brother Hill, you can, you know, show me many that you dealt with. Do you go after his tail, or do you? No, you you, you cut his head off. <laughs> you got to so so to send a message, uh, uh, send a message to Christians. They went after Herod went after the leader, chop off the leader, cut off the leader, do away with the. Do, do away with the leader. And if you do away with the leader, you will intimidate all of his followers. But God was not through with Peter yet. So Peter continued on. But it was now time for God to deal with Herod. And so because of all of the, the, uh, the uh, persecution, because of all of the evil that Herod had done uh, to believers, now he decides to uh, uh, show his power to the people and let the people know, if you got me, you got everything. And so the Bible tells us once again, and, and a few weeks ago, we talked about how God uses angels. And, 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 and I think if you, if, if you look to the scriptures very carefully, as I've done a, a, a word search and a study, of how God had used angels in, in scriptures. And I've, I've discovered that, that when God wants to move immediately, when God wants to do something so quickly and in and, and, and such a supernatural way that oftentimes God doesn't use us, God utilizes his angel. So we, 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 we find an angel appearing uh, in, this, in, in, the, in this passage of scripture uh, Right, right at verse 23, where we learn Im immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, and did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Eating by worms and died. Can you imagine what a what a what a horrible death to be alive? Because I mean, as I see it here, to be alive and have worms eating away at you, worms eating the way at you. I was I was listening to a a, a, a talk on on uh, this passage of scripture, and it talks about uh, one of the. Uh, the uh, early church uh, fathers, one of the historians, not early church fathers, but the historian uh, by the name of Josephus uh, uh, said that the, 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 the scientists concluded that, uh, that there were uh, thousands of, of tapeworms on the inside that, that, that he was actually, he was actually eaten alive from tapeworms that, that had formed on the inside of him. And, and you say, well, why all of this, why all of this happened? Because he interfered with the with the plan of God. Interfered with the plan of God. God has a special plan for our lives. And God dare individuals in our society to interfere 
in the plan and the purpose and what God wants to do in each one of our lives. We need to be confident in knowing that what God has started in us, that he's going to, he's going to finish it. He's going, he's going to carry it out. Although it may sometimes appear to be difficult and like, Lord, I don't know if I can continue on with this, but if it's part of God's will, it's part of God's plan and, and purpose, we just need to continue to stay focused. You know, there's a, a, there's a statement in scripture what God reminds us, the people of God, he says, vengeance is mine. That's what he says. He says, he said, vengeance, vengeance is mine that I will repay. I will repay. Again, the worst thing a person can do is interfere with the plan and the purpose of God. Any, any comments real quickly before we continue? Any comments real quickly? Open up, turn on your, turn on your mic and, uh, and go ahead and share. Any comments so far? Any any comments on on uh, how God handled uh, Herod? Go right ahead, please. What are your thoughts on how God dealt with with uh, Herod? I, I think that God is gonna. Um... He's going to eventually he'll stay silent, but eventually he's gonna show us that his plan is his plan and not our plan. So that's what he eventually did there. And yes. he's gonna constantly do today. Yes. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. Um go ahead, go ahead, Pastor. Pastor, well, we, go ahead. Yeah, well, we, we know that he's a he's a jealous God. And uh, he'll have no other God be, be, before him. Um, I think. I think the the the, the story is uh, it, it speaks for itself. You know, we we can't take God's glory. You know, so that that's why you know I always tell people they say you did a great job pastoring, uh, giving the word. I say to God be the glory. Amen. We don't never want to steal God's glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we. You know we have to be careful, and I and I have, I've shared this with you all before um, that um, I have this 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 T-shirt that basically says my my daughter gave it to me because she saw it somewhere. It said that sounds like daddy. It says uh, I am not lucky. I am blessed because when we say lucky, we kind of give credit to something or someone else but we say we're blessed we make no bones about it that we're giving all glory to god and yeah we we do have to be careful because man like man like praising us and and you know we all need a I, i'm not saying that there's something wrong everybody need a you know a, a pat on the back you know uh everybody need a pat on the back every now and then but uh but what I think we need to uh, um, uh, put in ourselves and begin to get this so embedded in us that when people are patting us on the back, we're patting the Lord on the back. <laughs> we said, uh, by the grace of God, uh, Lord, you're the one that has given me the air to breathe. Is in you we is in you we live and move and have our being. It's all about you, Lord. And so we give we give honor and glory unto uh, unto God. We give honor and glory unto God. And when we give honor and glory unto God, God take care of us. Amen. God take care of us. We have to leave it up to God to take care of us. But we must not interfere. Must not interfere in the plan and the purpose of God. Any other comment? Any other comment before we move forward? Any other comment? Must not interfere with the with the plan of God. So then, then in verse 24, this is why I concluded. When you look at verse 24, you can see why God had to take Herod out. And verse 24 says, but the word of God did what? 
the word of God did what? It mm -hmm. continued. It, it continued. Somebody tried to stop it. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. The word of God continued to spread and, 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 and flourish. You know, we are all uh, testimonies of that word that continued to flourish because generation after generation after generation have come and gone and the word found its way to us. The word found its way to us. But there was a, uh, there was a leader by the name of Herod that did everything he could to stop the word of God from, from spreading and God had to take him out. God had to take him out. And that's 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 how that's how powerful the word of God is. Is again the absence of the word of God. You know, you can roll out some of the best programs in the world. But if you don't have the word of you don't have the word of God. It just sometimes, you know, you may have a little gathering and uh, you know folks are often saying, "Ah, oh, you know, I don't want to go to it. They're going to be uh, uh, having a Bible study. Somebody's going to be preaching or whatever. Oh, I don't really want to go. I really don't want to go. But let me tell you the absence of the word of God. If you want to see your life change and you want to see the life of, of others change, you really, you really have to uh, cling to the word of God. It is the word of God, people of God. I, I know that I'm saying this over and over and over, but, but you can look at this little piece of story that we're about to close out here and see you had somebody that was interfering with the word of God and God took them out. God took them out. And so when folks are interfering with us, spreading the word of Jesus Christ, spreading the message of hope for Jesus Christ, then you may, you may want to hurry up and start praying for them because God's coming after them because God does not want anyone interfering, anyone interfering with his word because the only way that lives will be changed, the only way that, that, that hearts will be turned to God is through the word of God. Amen. Through the word of God. Look at look at these look at these latter scriptures here. Uh, beginning at uh, beginning at verse 25. It said when Barnabas and Saul, uh, soon to be named Paul, had finished their mission. What was their mission? Their mission was to do what? Someone jump in real quick. What was their mission? What to was destroy their the mission? Christians? To destroy the Christians? No, these are the uh, these are the apostles. These are the these these are the uh, 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 ministers here of the gospel. To preach the gospel. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, uh, brother Ed. I know what you're talking about, but uh, but Paul had already been Paul had already been converted. So he was, yeah. so his, 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 he was on the right track uh, to begin, you know, to begin to, uh, you know, share the, uh, share the good news of Jesus. He had already been com converted. So, so they were going, they were working together, Paul, uh, Barnabas and Saul, uh, the scripture said, had finished their mission and their mission was spreading the gospel throughout, you know, that, that region. When they finished it, the scripture said they returned from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh, and when they turned from Jerusalem, they were uh, they, they they were taking with them John, also called Mark. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers: Barnabas, Simeon, called Niga, Lucius, and Cyrene and Manna who had been brought up with Herod, the, the treacherer, and Saul, while, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, 
set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them and, 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 and sent them off. So the conclusion of our, of, of our story this evening really rests upon Herod, uh, the Lord taking Herod out because he was the one that was interfering, interfering with the gospel message, interfering with these apostles and teachers and, 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 and disciples going forth to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We have to be confident in, in knowing that when, when we reach out to share the good news of Jesus Christ, things happen, things happen. You know, I'll never forget, I was uh, with the street ministry some years ago, and when I do street ministry, I always like to find certain people, and I'll just go up to them and ask them, you know, can I pray? Can I pray for you? So we were doing street ministry at the, uh, right next to the Regal, uh, the Regal Theater uh, one Saturday, and I went by this cafe, and uh, we were passing out uh, invitations to the church and I saw this couple uh, that they kept looking at me and kept looking at me so I came over to their table and apologized for disturbing uh, their their afternoon and I just simply said could I could I pray for you C can I pray for you and they gave me permission and so I began to pray begin to uh, pray for them and that uh, that uh, that they would see God with all of their heart and and that they would uh, uh, embrace him and trust in him with all of their heart. And, and, and after I finished praying, uh, they told me that they were believers. They were here from out of town and they needed that prayer. They needed that prayer. They needed that prayer. So when we do the work of God, you know, there is, there's so much protection behind us. Yet there are persecution. Yeah, there are many things, but we need to be confident in knowing that the hands of God is upon us. And when you see things happening in this world, sometimes it is easy for us to say, where is God? You know, where is God? But the Bible says that he's a very present help. God is always in the midst somewhere, even when you can't feel him, when you can't see him, when you can't even have any inkling that he's there, we as the people of God must believe by faith that he's there. Amen. Any any final thoughts? Any final thoughts or comments as we uh, prepare to wrap up? Any final thoughts or comments on on these passages of scripture this evening? Yes. Go right ahead. The Bible says, uh, "Touch not." my anointing or do my prophet no harm. So, you know, as children of God, we are protected and God has our back and we don't have to fear when folks come up against us and try to retaliate, we should leave vengeance to the Lord because the Lord said, touch not my anointed or do my prophets no harm. Amen. Amen. That is, that is so true. And, and that's a very, powerful passage of scripture that we should uh we sh we you know we should embrace as we go forward because when we go forward we go forward with uh you know with boldness when i was a when i was a young christian i was very timid about my faith and uh some brothers uh laid hands on me and prayed that god would give me the boldness to share his word with others. You know, I I talk to my children often about not being afraid to uh, share their faith uh, with others. You know, the school tells tells them, oh, you can't be, can't bring this in here and whatever. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't be afraid to share with others the hope that is within you. And I pray that God will give every single one of you on the on this uh this the zoom this evening boldness 
to proclaim the message of, of Jesus Christ. You know, when, when you, the, the longer we serve God, you know, we really should get to the point of saying, Lord, you know, I, I love you so much, you know, I'm going to die. I'm willing to die. I'm willing to die believing in you with all of my heart, soul, and mind. Lord, I am nothing without you. And you know, the more we embrace, the more we embrace God like that, the more we are able to see God do a mighty work in uh, our life. You know, every, every one of those apostles in scripture, with the, with the exception of John, John the Revelator, they died. They were willing to die and they were, they were killed, they were murdered, they, were, they died believing, believing in what they experienced with Jesus Christ. And you know, I often say if, it, if all of this that we've read about Jesus, if it wasn't true, wouldn't you think maybe one of them would have said, oh, they told us to get together and make all of this up, but not one of them, not one of them came forward but they all died and was killed and taken out, suffered and died because of what they believe, what they believe. And, and we need to walk away this evening with that death-defying belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you lost it all, if you got Jesus, you still got it all. <laughs> you got you, you got Jesus. You 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 still got it all. Think, things may not be going well for you right now, but guess what? If you got Jesus, it's turning. It's going to turn around. I'm, I'm a witness. It's going to turn around. And when it turn around, you ain't going to be able to get credit for it. You're going to like God did it. God did it. I could I could tie this line up for the for the next for several hours just giving you story after story after story that I experienced myself and say, God did it. God did it. That all I could do is walk away and say, what a, you know, what a mighty God. What so, a mighty uh, God we serve. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Brother Kevin here. So this is, this, this, I, I'm glad you make that point because we find that, we find, we, we find that, these believers were so convicted in their faith that nothing could not move them. Neither death, nor, 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 nor persecution, nor nothing could have moved them. And, we, and, and, and the Bible says that we, um, these things are going to come back in the last days. And, 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 and what I'm saying is that the church really, because the church has 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 become so we have become so relaxed in in in, in the last couple of years in in, in the calm because we, 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 we've been enjoying the calm before the storm and we've been, and we've become so relaxed that we we accept we accept things that are uh, thing and we, and we allow things to happen and legislation to pass that 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 is um that is that is un ungodly that is not of god and we compromise because we want to accept and because the world has put the pressure on us and say oh we as a christian you're supposed to love everybody right when the bible clearly says that god do not love the, the the ways of the of the heathen. He do not love the ways of the heathen. Um, when you look at the book of Revelation, chapter two, um, one to three, when God is speaking to the churches, there's a and 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 He give that warning to the churches first before He give that before He give that um the the, the before He op He give the revelation of what gonna happen when these seals open. Uh, in these last days, uh, and uh, and I want to think think specifically to about three different churches. You hear he said, he, he used um, 
you, I, 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 I love the way that you hate the way of the Nicolaitans as I do in, 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 some, in somewhat that manner. And we, and we as the church, like, I feel like the church is more and more just compromising in faith, compromising in the word of God. We, we stand by and accept what we know to be true, what, what we know to be true in our heart, in our spirit. We, 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 try, we, we, we stand by and accept the opposite. You know, um, a couple, a couple, a few years ago, legislation passed uh, and says that hey, if uh, if a pastor has to, if, if if a gay couple needs to be married in in a church, you can't deny them. You understand? God came and made an upset and allow uh, uh, allow that uh, allow that that, that um that that, that 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 those laws that we been because a lot of legislation in in the last eight years uh in the last um thing of, of obama was geared towards the church i don't know if you if we realize that and um, god came and made her upset in the last four years and and now you you see that the the, the, the stage is being set to take up from where it was being left off and and God and, and it's like it's like God is keep giving us time as the believers to to, to, to get up and get out. Just like just like He give He give um He give He give He give a lot in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Just like He give the the, the, the people in the days of Noah. Noah preached for 120 years before before the flood came. So what, what I'm saying is that. We, as the church, we need to um, continue in that faith and not accept and not compromise Yes, and We compromise for a lot of little things. We take part in, in, in pagan holidays and rituals, you understand? And, and we try to put a God spin to it. And, and you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't mix holy with unholy. And this, and this is the thing that that, 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 that grieves my spirit as a believer and um, because the younger generation don't see anything in the church that is holy that's different from the world because even even if you go to the internet and you search just churches that have twerking and doing the nanny on on, on on in church because they want to try to appeal to the young people and 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 the holy I, and I believe I strongly believe that the Holy Spirit is enough to appeal to anybody, to appeal to young, old, gay, thief, robber, criminal, whatever you is. We don't have to accept um, sin in, in in the house of God. That's why Jesus came and he tore down the temple with anger and with a vengeance because he said that this house, my father's house, shall be called shall become a house of is a house of prayer but you have made it into a house of den in, in a den of thieves so all i'm saying as in this new season remember we we be talking about 21 days and for the last few um couple of days i've been really studying daniel and the last trip the last three chapters of daniel is actually the last three chapters of daniel is actually the book of Revelation, a preview of the book of Revelation, but the seal has been has been shut for a time because Daniel and and that's when Daniel was fasting for 21 days, and it hit me in the spirit that we are entering the 2021, and and, and what is the church doing? We are sleeping. We put in our trust in this this candidate and that candidate and fighting over which candidate should be president. And the Bible says, put your not put your trust not in princes or the son of men. So my 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 my, my, my it's just a it's just a it's just a thought and a a a a, 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 a word a prophetic word that I just want to share with the believers fellow believers on the line. Put your trust not in prince.
Moses or the son of men. Put your trust in the word of God. The unadulterated. Get back to the unadulterated word of God. Don't try to water it down. Don't mix it. Get back to it. You understand? Because we are entering a time of great, uh, of great persecution in the church. And we're sleeping. The church is sleeping. We want to be of the world. We want to be in the world and partake of the world. The Bible, the word of God says you could be in the world, but not of the world. That means that if I come to your house, okay, I don't have to eat what you give me to eat. But I'll come to your house because for whatever reason, I've been invited to your house. But I don't have to partake in whatever it is going on in your house. Amen. And that's just and just and that's just a word I want to share with you guys. 2021 okay. is a year of great trial and tribulation and testing for the church. And it's either we're gonna succeed or we're gonna fail. It don't Amen. matter who's become president, it don't matter none of that. So keep that in mind as we go forward in this new year. Get in, okay. get into prayer and fasting. The word says that this type only come by prayer and fasting. The only how the church could win is through prayer and fasting in this next season. Amen, my brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, before we close out, anyone else like to have some closing comments? Go right ahead. Well, I just want to add and say that, you know, I just thank God that, you know, he gave us all a choice and you know, we have to choose and we have to remember that, you know, like Ed said, he's a jealous God and that, you know, there are consequences, whether it's good one or bad one, according to our, the choices that we make. So we all are accountable for our own sins and for our own choices that we make. We're accountable for them because when we get in front of God, we can't point any fingers. So we have to make sure that we are doing our part, what he, you know, what we're put here for, because we all have a purpose and we can't look to the left. We can't look to the right. We have to make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to do ourselves. We can't um, point any fingers and look what the other person is doing. And we're not doing any, and I, you know, myself not doing anything. So I have to look to me to make sure I'm in right with, with God and what I'm supposed to do because I can't speak for anybody else, you know. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Anyone else? Anyone else uh, before we close out? Any final thoughts, Brother Hill? Brother? I just want to agree with Sister Christine. Because God is going to hold us believers more accountable than the rest of the world. Amen. We are going to be, because we know the difference between right and wrong. We know the difference between good and evil. And God is going to hold us accountable for our actions. High, at a higher level of judgment than the rest of the world. Amen. 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 Anyone I agree else? with that. I agree with that. And mostly pastors, yeah. you know, you're accountable for your, <coughs> excuse me, congregation. And um, I think God's going to hold us accountable. But more importantly now, I think during these purges times we're going through now, I think that we need to, if sometimes we're going to see his hand and sometimes we're not. But if you don't see his hand, you have to trust his heart. Because he never lied to us and he never will lie to us. He can't lie. So we just got to trust his heart through this, through whatever we may go through during this time. We just got to trust him. We know in the beginning that we're going to win. The battle is won in the end. And we just got to trust that fact. And I don't care what this world may present to us. It hadn't changed. This is the same God from the days of Egypt who opened the Red Sea and carried his people, had them wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Same God, same God. Nothing changed. We still live in the Bible days. That's all I got to say. Amen. Amen. 
beautiful uh, uh, Pastor Eric, you got any closing, any closing remarks? Pastor, you can you unmute? Yeah, yeah. Um, there you go. Very good. good yeah, I um I, I definitely um enjoyed the text. Um, um knowing that um we, we should not uh, get the big head like King Herod did and um you know taste God's glory. You know, so that that's something that 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 we all need to take heed of. That you know, um, whenever God gives us a word, it's, it's not our word; it's His. It's given through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, one thing that the Scripture does say is that we we all only know in part, even in prophecy. Um, you know, we um, we all are, are lovers of the Word of God, and, and I believe in my whole in my spirit. You know that, you know, as long as what, what the word of God says, I have to stick with the word that says there's no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. So, you know, we don't want to condemn each other by certain things that we may may do, may be contrary to other people. But um, we, we want to just continue just to, to, to just to, you know, continue to go into the highways and byways and, and spread the good news of Jesus Christ, you know, the best that I can, you know, and that, that, that's basically it. You know, that's all Acts was, is about, you know, um, the, the establishment of the churches and, and continuing to spread the, the, the good news of Jesus Christ. So I think as long as we continue to do that with a pure heart and, you know, no, no um, contention in us, I, I believe that we'll be okay. Amen. Amen. And, and Pastor, I, I'd like to say. I, I just want to finish that word that you used. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Amen. And Pastor, I want to say one more thing. Go ahead. This world is on the edge now about the election next week, but I'm reminded that we need to remind ourselves that we're not of this world. God don't ride the backs of donkeys or elephants. He don't come to take sides. He take come to take over. Yeah. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Okay, guys. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to close out. I don't think I missed anyone that wanted to speak. If you did, you need to jump in right now because we're about to close this thing out in prayer. Yeah. Uh, Kel. Go ahead. Yes. I, uh, you know, last time I was uh, asking about the angels and I see uh, Angel shows up again. <laughs> he shows up again, and what God is using the angel to uh, convey his message. And uh, it was really then, uh, or you know, the last time we we had our that I was on Bible study, we talked about the the angels, and you said that everybody has one. And uh, you know, you 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 go back in your mind's eye and you think about some of the close calls you've had. You know, in the past, accidents or uh, stumbles and falls, and you, you're able to get right back up and, and do it again. And uh, when when I saw in this scripture, the angel shows up again, where uh, the Lord uses him to get a message to Heron or strike down Heron, and uh, he was eaten by the worms. So. Um, that resonated with me, <laughs> but it was angels. <laughs> so now I'm, when I go, when I'm on the highway, I'm riding on the highway, I'm, I'm like, hey, where are you at? Where are you? <laughs> you gotta get me through this traffic because I can't get it out. I gotta yeah. go, I gotta go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that uh, that kind of resonated with me and when, I, uh, when we, we went over that, uh, that part in the scripture about uh, uh, the Lord using the angel again yeah. um, to uh, convey a message. And, and he got his message across. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They, they carry carry out the mission, whatever yeah. they've been yeah. instructed to do. They, yeah. they do, do exactly what he told them to do and they get up out of there. They don't, they don't hang around for, because uh, you know, they hung around people. The first thing folks want to do is worship worship them, but they do what they need to do, do what God told them to do, and they're out of there. But we're out of time, people of God, uh, certainly never, uh, 
never out of uh, out of uh, a desire to worship and be in the presence of the of the people of God. But we're gonna close out in prayer right now. I just want to uh, pray a, a prayer of boldness over each of us that we would have the boldness of the uh, of the original apostles that we would share the good news of Jesus Christ to all those that we come in contact with and that we would not allow it to be a mystery that we belong to the household of faith. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will pour down his power upon each one of us that, that we would do things that we normally would not be able to do. We would say things that we would normally not be able to say that we'd allow the Holy Spirit of God to take control of our tongue and use it as his mouth, mouthpiece. Father God, we pray that you allow us to be an instrument that you can play on this earth, that you allow our lives to be pistols that others can read and see you. Lord God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every family, the entire church family, all those represented on this line this evening. We pray your protection upon us. We pray, Lord God, that your will will be done during this election next week, Lord God, that the people of God will not look to the left or to the right, but look to you. For we know when we look to you, we know that regardless which way things go, when we look to you, the best is still yet to come. Bless us all, Lord God. We come against any powers of darkness, that, seeks, that sets itself up against us, Lord God. We come against it in the power and in the name of Jesus, we bind up the enemy, Lord God. We pray for the sick and the shut in. We pray that they be healed in the name of Jesus. Be with our families and all those in our sphere of influence. And so, Lord God, we ask all this in the marvelous, precious name of Jesus and the people of God said, amen, amen. And amen. 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 I want to encourage you uh, to uh, see if you can go ahead and read through Acts chapter 13 in preparation for our time together next week. You all have a blessed day. Just also want to remind you we have our communion uh, this coming Sunday at 3 o'clock uh, p.m. Trust you will be able to connect with us and join us in our 11 a.m. Uh, time of praise and worship. May God bless you and keep you in his watchful care. Have a blessed evening.